Today I'm machining some 2mm 5005 aluminium on the um, Bogman 3D. It's a 15 by 15 CNC. So these little platens that I've made are product specific. I've just made mounting points on them so I cut so many of these that it's worth having individual spoil boards for each of my products. And I've designed or I've broken the bed up into four sections, four quadrants. Uh, so one, two, three, four, um, and this way I know this board goes across slot one and three, this one, slot, if you can even still read it, two and four. Uh, makes it super simple for me to set up these jobs. You know, numerous ones for numerous different products that I make. Every time I make a new product, I will make a new platen um, or an individual spoil board, whatever you want to call it. They're all referenced to uh, zero down the corner here, and um, I design all the cutouts referencing uh, this home point right here so here I've got a 1 8 inch 3.175 millimeter uh, single flute upcut bit they are the uh, CNC 3d cutters really like these cutters um, compared to the Adams bits ones that I was using previously so the sheets sitting firm down on the on the spoil board so I've got the um, the little touch off plate and we're just going to run through a tool height setting cycle uh, this particular program does only use one tool uh, but usually my programs will run two or three different tools uh, let's just bop you guys down this way so this is just going to touch off comes down quickly and then slows down for a, a finer touch off and then it's going to whip across to the height setting gauge here and what that's going to do is just double check or set the height gauge uh, relative to the height of the workpiece so if we do any um, if we do any tool changes, it'll just um, do the maths on the height difference that it's measuring right now. And then that'll go back to its original position. This is initial zero setup. So this is part of uh, the big tech screen set for uh, Mark III. So if we do any tool changes during the job, we can just use tool change zero setup here. Uh, or if we were just doing a one-off touch off, we could just touch off um, with that guy up there. But I'll set that now because I'm pretty sure I'm going to run two jobs today. We'll see how time goes, but our uh, Z0 and Z height is set uh, in the machine. So if we push uh, go to Z here, the machine will come down and just touch off or touch in that corner there. And um, you probably can't tell very well because I can't hold you level, but we're all good to rock and roll. So I will pop up the speeds and feeds that I use for this cutter on uh, this 5005 aluminium. Uh, I have the coolant mist here. So I have uh, up there in that um, in that clear bucket there I have a pond pump that pumps down to this um, this box uh, and will drip feed coolant let me just fire that up right here and also I have a relay in the back to stop flow uh, from gravity feeding down so it pops the solenoid sorry not a relay solenoid pops the solenoid at the back and um, it will mist out of here so that's the mist setup. So no air compressor on this setup. It is just using a, a pump, which I'll flash a picture up on the screen now because I can't show you. It's buried behind pipework back there. And that's um, that's what we're splurting out. Uh, the dust boot that I've made here um, just has some magnets in it to connect it. And it does have a dedicated spot with the correct angle to spray just on the tip of the workpiece there. Um, so that's everything for that. Start the spindle, uh, 24,000 RPM. I cut everything at full noise, full speed. 
and I have the uh, dust collection on a remote switch. We're about halfway through right now. Probably not quite halfway through. So doing the outside profile cuts. Uh, leaving a 10 millimeter tab, uh, triangle shaped tab uh, on most of the, on all of the parts. Um, I don't do it on the inside bits. So we're at 24,000 RPM and you can see there um, when that part comes back up again we are 400 on the plunge right there traveling along really really nicely Okay, we're all done. We've cut uh, three uh, Evo 7 air boxes, uh, just uh, filled up the spaces with some nameplates and stuff. So that is all done there. It took us uh, an hour and 44 minutes to make all those cuts. And um, that is a quarter of a sheet there. So we've got the other quarter of a sheet, which is gonna be some catch cans. Older videos on my channel will have my little 6090 little Chinese machine. Um, not that this isn't a Chinese machine, but you know what I mean. Um, much faster cut speeds on this. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me cut some carbon fiber on this machine. And I'll make a video about that next. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.